Welcome to Singing Bowl Yoga and thanks for joining me this morning. Um, so this is our summer solstice slow flow and um, you, you know today might not be the summer solstice but we are headlong into summer right now and we had summer solstice some earlier this week and I think any time we can connect with the source of energy and light around us is wonderful but um, when we have these longer days like we are in the summer and especially on the summer solstice the longest day of sunlight we can really feel that connection and that extra energy that we get from um, these longer days and the sunlight but there's a source inside of us too that gives us strength and light and peace and so we'll, we'll play a little bit with that energy today as well so when we come to a standing position I often find that when we're doing mountain pose we kind of lock everything up and try to stand as rigid and tall as we can but I'm going to turn sideways so you can see situate your feet so they're at least hip width distance apart maybe even a little wider and then just to start noticing you know did you lock up your knees are you locking up in the hips uh, when you have your arms hanging next to you do you kind of lock up the elbows or the other joints see if you can soften a little bit in fact make your knees just a little bit spongy right kind of bend the knees just a little bit and notice how you sink down into your feet even more and then you can start to energize the muscles around the leg bones without locking up the joint of the knee or the ankles even so you'll notice when you bend your knees the ankles start to flex a little bit more too so that makes the feet root down more so anytime you feel a little woozy kind of check your knees because sometimes we lock up the knees and then uh, blood flow kind of gets uh, restricted so a little soft knees weight into your feet we often refer to um, the four corners of the feet right so if that is not accessible to you if it makes more sense to think of your foot as a tripod the big toe ball the pinky toe ball and the center of the heel go ahead and think that I know when I first started doing yoga the four corners of the feet the big toe ball the pinky toe ball the inner and outer edges of the heel I feel like my heel is just a solid one thing right so if that image of a tripod works better for you then feel rooted down into the tripod of each foot notice what that feels like and then again just let the arms kind of hang from the shoulder sockets now that doesn't mean that we're rounding forward really relaxing the joints um, so that we're kind of collapsing but just softening that any rigidity in the body right now you can still feel nice and long through the crown of the head all the way down to the tailbone all the way down to your heels right? you might just soften your gaze out in front of you or you could even close your eyes right now sometimes that helps to bring your energy or your awareness to that energy inside and before you start your yoga practice it's always kind of good to note how you're feeling right feeling energetic feeling a little sluggish maybe just feeling neutral all of that's okay and now bring your hands together into our classic Anjali Mudra uh, some people refer to this as the meet in the middle pose right so you're bringing your hands right to the middle of your body the center of your chest and the midline of your body if you'd like set an intention for your yoga practice today maybe it is connecting to that uh, inner source of energy and light peace and strength inside of you or perhaps you'd like to share what you have with others like a ray of sunshine wherever you go and now while we have our hands together in front of the chest let's just practice a little uh, deep breathing more conscious breathing if you'd like you can practice your ujjayi pranayama where you feel that wave of the breath coming into the back of the throat 
when you inhale and then you feel that wave you might even hear it as you exhale So for me, the best way to describe this um, victorious breath work, this ujjayi breath, is to imagine that you're breathing in and out through your throat instead of through your nose. The mouth is closed. You know, oftentimes we start this type of breathing technique by uh, coaching you to imagine that you're huffing on your sunglasses or a mirror to clean off the glass. And then we close the mouth and we feel that same contraction in the back of the throat, both when we inhale and exhale. So it might feel a little easier when you're exhaling to kind of huff the breath out with your mouth closed. But see if you can feel this as a smooth action. I like to think of it as wave breath, like the ocean waves. So you're not forcing the air in or out. All you're doing is kind of gently restricting the flow so that you're aware of the movement of the breath in the throat. You might start to notice some warming. Extra energy. And now just flutter your eyelids if your eyes were closed, open them all the way. Check your knees again, just make sure they're not locked up. Even with your elbows bent, kind of relaxing the joints. And now on your next inhale, hold your hands together, palms and fingers still together as you bring your arms up overhead. Again, don't lock up the elbows, just reach up. And then as you exhale, bring your thumbs down the center of the body, hinge from your hips, and fold in half. Let your fingertips touch the floor, bow your head, and then as you inhale, sweep your arms out and back up overhead, letting the palms and the fingers meet in the middle. As you exhale, once again, just bringing the thumbs down the center of the body as you hinge from your hips to bend in half, touch the floor. Inhale, circle the arms out, rise up, let the palms and the fingers meet in the middle overhead. Exhale, slice the body in two with your thumbs, hinging from your hips. Bend your knees as much as you need to to touch the floor. And then inhale, circle the arms, rise up, reach up. Let the palms and the fingers meet. This time as you exhale, just bring your hands back to the center of your chest, standing tall without the knees locked up, without the ankles locked up. Good. Now release your arms back down alongside the body and bring your hands to your low back with your elbows pointing back, fingers pointing down towards the floor, shoulders back and the shoulder blades are drawing downward not just pinching together so we want to feel like we're kind of pulling the shoulder blades down lift the chest up lift the chin up come into a standing back bend here now again don't lock up the knees the knees are still a little soft pressing down through all four corners of your feet or your tripod in each foot whatever works best for you Take a couple breaths in and out, enjoying this extension in your back, but also feeling like you're not just spreading your inner light and energy, but taking in a little bit more of the light and energy around you. Feeling that connection to the earth while you're doing that through the feet. Good, now as you exhale, slowly bring your gaze forward. Bring your torso back to vertical and then sweep your arms back up over the shoulders. Let the palms and the fingers meet. Use your next exhale to bring the thumbs down the center of the body, folding in half. Let your head hang. Let's stay in this forward fold for a few breaths, noticing what you're doing with your legs, with your feet, with the joints in your knees and your ankles, even the joints in your elbows. So sometimes we want to reach the floor so much that we lock up the arms to try to make them longer. But instead, just let your arms and shoulders relax. 
let your fingertips either touch the floor or if you want to add height to the floor you can always use your yoga props or if you don't have yoga props thick books always work well right so you can do something like that good on our next inhale we're going to walk the hands up to the front of the mat and walk the feet towards the back of the mat and just find our first downward facing dog together plant your fingers firmly on the floor your heels do not need to be on the floor here in downward facing dog in fact lift your hips up and try pressing your heels back not just down this is where you can really feel the big toe ball and the pinky toe ball and then just maybe drawing an imaginary line towards the floor from the center of your heels again they don't have to touch try not to lock up your knees just lift your hips a soft bend in the knees and if that's a little too intense, bend the knees a little bit more. And you can even alternate bending the knees to warm up the legs a little bit. All right, now on our next inhale, we're gonna float into a plank pose. So you might need to rearrange your hands and feet so that the hips are just slightly lower than the shoulders. And we're gonna pause here, just kind of feeling that inner strength, spiking the heels back, lifting the inner thighs up a little bit. Again, the knees do not need to be locked up. And so don't lock up the knees, but kind of relax them just ever so slightly. Try to find the ball mounds of your toes on the floor. Now on your next exhale, lift your hips back up into your downward facing dog, pressing your heels back, broadening your shoulders, lifting the hips, even lifting the tail, gently engaging those abdominals again. Our next inhale brings us back into our plank and then we exhale back into downward facing dog. So let's do this a few times. Inhale plank. Try not to just go through the motions but feel the strength, the lightness of your body even. Exhaling back into your downward facing dog. Inhale into plank. Go ahead and do a couple more, just moving at your own pace, nice and slow. This is where that ujjayi pranayama might come in handy, that victorious breath work, bringing that warmth and heat into all parts of the body. Good, now next time you're in your plank, let's hold it there. This is a power pose, right? Feeling the strength of the body. You're lengthening your tailbone towards your heels. You're spiking your heels back. Again, don't lock up the knees, but really just press back into the heels. Lift your navel towards your spine without hiking the hips up. Good, now from here, we're gonna work our way through our Chaturanga Dandasana. So if your hands and feet are really far apart, try just floating onto the tips of your toes. So when you bend your elbows, they stay over your wrists as you lower yourself slowly towards the floor. Once you're on the floor, point your toes, cross your arms underneath your forehead, and rest. So this is what Shiva Ray refers to as prostration. In Sanskrit, it's called pranam. So what we're doing is balancing that heat and energy of the plank through the Chaturanga Dandasana, that forelimb staff pose, to then rest on the floor. Rest on the floor, bow to the earth, connect more deeply with the earth, the earth elements the sun and now we'll just slowly work our way up lifting the head away from the floor bring your hands underneath your shoulders Oops. pull the elbows back and keep lifting your head and chest but keep your hips down press down through the tops of your feet again try not to lock up the knees but feel like you're lifting the front of the thighs up away from the floor you'll feel the knees lift too just a nice cobra here now while you're in your cobra maybe just swivel the head side to side a few times taking in your surroundings noticing what you see all part of your present moment experience and maybe even connecting this swiveling of the head with your breath. You can use your exhale to turn the head. Use your inhale to come to center. Exhale, turn the head. 
Let's go side to side a couple more times. If you remember which side you went to, first go to the other side one more time. Good, and then release yourself back down onto the earth. Either letting your forehead or your nose rest, bring your arms just alongside the body. And relaxing the shoulder, relaxing the arms. Once again, just making this connection with the floor, bowing to the earth. The earth and the sun. And we meet in the middle, somewhere between the two. And once again, bring your hands under your shoulders, lift your head. Let's go ahead and just curl the toes under. If you like, you can work your way back to plank, either by lifting the knees first and then pushing yourself up away from the floor. Or you can push your knees down and come through kind of that knees down plank. Once you're in plank, and just arranging your feet so they're about hip distance apart, wrists are under the shoulders, and then use your next exhalation to find your downward facing dog. Pressing your heels or back, not just down, lifting the heels up, lifting the navel up, broadening the collarbones, broadening the shoulders. There's no need to pinch the shoulders up onto the back. In fact, this is where it's important to kind of have the shoulders sort of meet in the middle. So try this with me. Squeeze your shoulders up towards your ears. Actually, down towards your ears in this case, right? So like you're trying to hunch your shoulders towards your ears. Good. And now push your shoulders and your shoulder blades all the way up towards your hips as much as you can. Really push them up. And then see if you can find kind of the in-between of that. Maybe you need to do that a couple more times. I often call this flossing the shoulders. I think it feels good. But we don't want to be squeezing the ears with the shoulders and we don't want the shoulders pushed up onto the back like you're trying to hold a pencil between your shoulder blades. Try to broaden the shoulder blades, broaden the collarbones, broaden the shoulders. Find kind of that in-between space and that will allow you to hold your downward facing dog without putting too much stress on those shoulders. Now from here let's lift the right leg up into the air and then just simply lunge your right foot between your hands. We're setting up for warrior two, so go ahead and pivot your left heel down and come on up when you're ready. Spreading your wings, opening the arms so they're parallel to the floor, right arms reaching forward, left arms reaching back. We're bending deeply into the right knee, but we want that right knee tracking towards the center of that right foot. Good. Now bring your left hand onto your heart. And I'm just reminding yourself of that inner source of light and heat and strength. And then flip your right palm up towards the ceiling. On your next inhale, let's come into that peaceful reverse warrior, exalted warrior, reaching the right arm up and back, bending deeply into that right knee. Again, try not to lock up the left knee, but use the strength of that left leg to push the right knee forward just a little bit more. Good. Now on your next inhale, let's work our way back to our warrior two. Open your arms back out into that parallel structure, reaching the left fingertips back, right fingertips forward. Good. Now as you exhale, bring your right hand to the center of your chest. And now slowly hinge forward towards that right leg. Your right elbow could hover above your right knee. It could rest on that right thigh, or you could bring your right elbow inside the right leg. We're coming into a variation of side angle pose. So reach the left fingertips forward. So that left arm comes right over the left ear. And you're lifting your left ear up towards that left arm so that you're not letting your head kind of sag. Now draw your right hip crease back a little bit and see if you can just soften the bend in that right knee just a little bit more, sinking down just a little bit more, rooting down into the feet, just like we did in our standing mountain pose. Good, on our next inhale, we're gonna work our way back to our warrior two. Spread your wings, beautiful. And then as you exhale, bring both hands back to the floor. Plant your hands, roll your left heel off the floor, step your right foot back, find your plank pose. All right, again, a nice power pose. Spiking the heels back, lifting the inner thighs up, relaxing the hips down just a little bit. 
So we've got the wrists right underneath the shoulders. Now take your right foot off the floor and just swing your right leg out to the right. If you need to, you can touch down with your right big toe or just let it hover. Try to keep your hips level, keep the breath smooth or engage in that ujjayi pranayama. And now bring your right foot back to the floor behind your right hip. Balance on that right leg now and swing your left leg out to the left. And again, you could touch down with your left big toe or just let it hover. Try not to hike your hips up. Let your breath be smooth. And then swing that left leg back behind the left hip. Put your left foot down. Here we go, we're gonna go through our chaturanga. Now you can do this with the knees down. Just make sure the shoulders shift forward. Elbows stay over the wrist as you lower. Elbows stay in close to the body too. Once you're down, point your toes. Inhale, cobra. Keep your hips down, elbows back, shoulders broad. Shoulder blades slide down the back. Exhale to lower your forehead or nose. Inhale. Push back up to your plank pose. Exhale to downward facing dog. And again, just check your shoulders. You kind of meet in the middle with your shoulders. Press your heels back, not down, back. Kind of light, lightness in the knees. Lift your hips, lift your navel, and now lift your left leg into the air. As you exhale, bring your left foot between your hands. You can always help it up, right? Pivot the right heel down, and let's find our warrior two. Sometimes when we come up, it feels like we're on a surfboard, right, or paddleboard. So take your time, make sure the feet feel anchored. You know, again, softness in the joints. You're lengthening that left knee forward towards the center of the left foot and we're centering the weight between the legs. So instead of just trying to shift your shoulders back, pull your navel back. It might mean you have to kind of unbend that front knee a little bit and then sink down. Try to steady your gaze towards the middle finger on your left hand. Reach back though equally through the right fingertips. Good, let's go ahead and bring that left, or sorry, right hand to the heart. So the back arm comes forward and you touch your chest with your right hand. Kind of reconnect with that inner source, your source. And now flip your left palm up and sweep the left arm up and back, coming into that peaceful, exalted reverse warrior again try not to lock up your right knee but use the strength of the muscles in that right leg to bend a little more deeply into your left knee yeah sinking the hips down just a little bit more but lifting the heart up maybe even lifting the gaze up good our next inhale come back to warrior two spread your arms out reaching back with the right hand reaching forward with the left hand Good, now this time the left hand comes to the chest. And as you exhale, you're hinging from your left hip crease. Keep drawing that left hip crease back, keep bending into that left knee. Right arm sweeps up and overhead. Now you can either rest your left elbow on that left knee, it could hover, or you could bring it inside the leg. And this is our variation of Parsvokanasana, side angle pose. Keep drawing that left hip crease back, sinking into that left knee. Ooh, yummy. Again, you don't need to lock up that right elbow. Just reach. Good. Our next inhale brings us back into our warrior two. Spread your wings, gaze forward. As you exhale, plant your hands. Lift your right heel off the floor. Step back into your plank pose. Awesome. This time we're going to come into a side plank by rolling the heels over to the right. You can leave your left foot on the floor. You can leave your left hand on the floor. Or you can bring your <clears throat> left arm over your left shoulder and put your left foot on your right foot. Good. Nice deep breath. Try to lift your hips just a little bit higher. Maybe lift your gaze. Open up the heart. And then as you exhale, Left hand comes down, left foot comes down, or we roll back onto the balls of the toes. We're back in our plank pose. Let's go to the other side. Roll your heels over to the left. 
You're going to leave your right foot in front of the left foot, but you're on the outer edge of that left foot like it's a knife edge. Right hand could stay down, or right arm can come up over the right shoulder. Lift your hips. Maybe you bring your right foot onto your left foot. So you're stacking the feet, still lifting the hips. Vashistasana, side plank. Try not to lock up the joints even here. Yeah, press down into the outer edge of that left foot. Slowly bring your right hand down. Bring your feet back to the floor. You're on your toes. And then let's go ahead and come through our chaturanga all the way to the floor. Point your toes. Keep your elbows back. Lift your heart and head. Cobra. Keep your hips down. You get to decide how high your cobra comes. As you exhale, lower back down. Inhale, you can reverse back to a knees down plank and then to plank and then to downward facing dog. Lift the hips high. Good. Now from our downward facing dog, we're going to make our way back into Uttanasana, the standing forward bend. You can hop or step your feet up to the front of the mat. You can always walk the rest of the way if the hop doesn't get you there. Feet about hip distance apart. Dive your head down. Rest your fingertips on the floor. Let your hands dangle. Or you can use your props if you'd like. Again, there's a little softness to the knees or a lot of softness to the knees, especially if you're feeling a lot of pulling in the low back, right? So adjust the pose to suit your body today. Good, now on our next inhale, we're gonna circle the arms out and stand up. Rise up, see if you can find your palms and fingers meeting in the middle overhead. It may take a little finessing, right? And then as you exhale, just come to mountain pose, hands at the heart. Awesome. All right, let's do a little balancing. So um, kind of balancing this uh, idea of sending our energy out and taking in energy, right? So feet on the floor, about hip distance apart. You could even go a little narrower if you'd like. So the feet kind of come right underneath. And then just, again, just let your hands meet at the middle. This helps to remind you, too, of that midline connection. Because when we're balancing, you know, all the weight gets shifted to one side or the other, and we might feel a little off balance. So, you know, just take a moment here. Again, see if you can access the four corners or the tripod of each foot. It might help to wiggle around a little bit to get there. And then how about if we start by balancing on the right side first? So you'll bring your left knee up. Just nice and slow. Try not to lean back or forward, but just use your abdominals to hold the leg up. Now we're going to swivel that left knee out to the left, and you can also do this with the toes on the floor, right? And then you can either place your foot somewhere on your leg above or below the knee, or if you'd like to join me in the half lotus uh, variation here, you can help your foot to come up into the crease of your right leg and come into that variation. Lengthening your tailbone down, setting your gaze softly out in front of you, finding that connection with your breath, that earth connection through the foot, the sun connection through the heart. Good. All right, releasing slowly, letting your left foot come back to earth. Breathe a little sigh of relief, right? It's always nice to have both feet on the earth again. Feel free to wiggle around a little bit, adjust your stance. Mm, thank your body for what it just did. No judgment, right? No, no criticisms. We're not doing an evaluation sheet right now. Just find your mountain pose once again. All right, we're going to shift our equilibrium this time to the left leg. So notice, sometimes the left leg, you know, just doesn't want to do it, right? Or the body just needs a chance to kind of acclimate. So you can always keep your right toes on the floor or just bring that right knee up and start that core connection. So I find in balancing, it's not just about the leg, it's not just about the glutes working, but it really is about the core, right? And you can swivel that leg out and plant the foot on your leg or join me 
in the half lotus stance version of tree pose rixasana yeah so again we don't need to lock up that standing leg root down into that left foot and see if you can grow from those roots right like a tree just keeping the hands right at the heart letting them stay in this midline of the body feeling that connection while we're trying to balance and then we'll release out slowly just letting that let right foot find the floor right I think sighing is underrated so go ahead and sigh kind of release out wiggle out all right if you moved around a little bit on your mat uh, join me back at the front of the mat and pause for a moment in your mountain pose keep your hands together as you bring your arms back up over your shoulders and then as you exhale slice yourself in two as you bend in half touch the floor and then from our Uttanasana let's go ahead and just walk the feet to the back of the mat and then keep your feet close together here so really close together and then kind of peel the knees out and lower the knees to the outer edges of the mat and then as you point your toes let the big toes continue to stay together right there at the middle sink your hips back drop your belly and your chest and your head to the floor Bring the palms of the hands together again. And let your elbows rest on the floor. Let your pinkies rest on the floor. Let your hips sink back towards your heels. And we recollect that integrity of the breath, whether you're doing ujjayi, victorious breath work, or you're just watching the breath and connecting deeply with it. All right, when you're ready, plant your palms on the floor, about shoulder distance apart. Slowly work your way up to a tabletop. Bring your right knee over next to your left knee and then sit down on your hips. We're gonna come into a seated position, stretching the legs out in front of us. In what we call Dandasana, or staff pose. Some people call it flagpole pose. Heels press down, toes flex up. Again, we're not locking up the knees, but we're activating the front of the thighs to kind of anchor the legs anchor the hips so preferably nothing underneath the hips at this point because we're going to play a little bit you could um, grab your strap or a small towel if um, you want to use that otherwise uh, we'll just use our hands so we're going to start to hinge forward from the hips when we do that try to keep your head and neck all in line with the spine you can walk your hands down the outside of the legs if you're using a strap you can put the strap on both feet and just gently hold the strap or you might be able to reach out and hold on to your feet with your hands so this is a classic seated forward bend or the Paschimottanasana um, these kind of uh, poses can be also very calming and kind of, you know we're starting our floor sequence so if you'd like you can also just take a deep breath in and exhale through the mouth and just a little signal to the body that we're starting this uh, downshifting just a little bit and then I'm going to have you bring both hands to your right foot or if you're using a strap transfer the strap to just your right foot you can hold it in both hands as you start out so it's a little bit of a mini twist you're actually just reorienting the center of your body uh, to the right just ever so slightly it kind of feels like one leg grows a little longer all of a sudden than the other leg so try to keep the legs the same length as you lean out over that right leg we, I, we took Cole for a long walk yesterday uh, over at the forest preserve and you know he's 14 and we hang out with a, a another lab that is like three I think and um, he, he tries to go the distance and then he pays the price the next day so he's always a little grumbly the next day 
he needs to do his yoga, I think. We've got to stretch him out a little bit. All right, so we're going to hold on to this right foot with just the left hand, or if you're using a strap, take the strap into just your left hand. And then reach forward with your right fingertips, like there's someone out there you're going to shake hands with across the room. Right? And now sweep your right arm up into the air, lift your chest up, lift your head up, and then reach back through the right fingertips. Hold on to your right foot with your left hand, and then try to bring your torso all the way up to vertical. You'll probably have to lift that right foot up off the floor. Yeah. This is one of my new favorite poses. I like to think of it as sort of like a sundial, right? So we're human sundials. Enjoy your breath. Sit nice and tall. Try not to lean back or forward. Just sit nice and tall. You can also do this with the foot on the floor. Just building up to different variations of the pose that work for your body. Good. Now let's take that right arm back up into the air and reach back for that right foot. Good. We'll give this right leg a little bit more of a stretch. So again, you can have your right foot on the floor or just bring that right leg a little bit higher. Like a heron variation here. Sit nice and tall. Again, try not to lean forward or back. The back is nice and long. Oh, a nice stretch for the hamstrings, maybe even the calf and the ankle here, right? Beautiful. Now we're going to bend the right knee and put the right foot on the floor outside the left leg. So the right knee will be up, the right foot will be down, that right leg stays extended. We're going to go into a little deeper twist here. This time I want you to reach forward with your left hand, like we're going to shake hands kind of awkwardly, right, with that left hand. And then bring your left arm up over your left shoulder and just reach as high as you can. Get a lot of length in the body. Your right hand can stay on that right knee just for leverage right now. And now slowly start to turn your navel to the right. As you do, bend your left elbow and see if it lands outside that right knee. If it happens to land on top of the right knee or inside, then wrap your left arm around the leg. If it lands outside the knee, you can keep it wedged there. Sitting nice and tall, bring your right hand to the floor wherever you are with your left arm. Right hand comes right behind that right hip. Sink down into your right hip and lift up just a little bit more. So the idea is to turn the navel. Good. So I think you want to turn to the other direction, Debbie. I can't tell. Yeah. I get my right and left confused all the time. My favorite joke is to say I don't have any wrong sides. I only have a two right sides. Hey. All right, now to come out of it, let's take that left arm back up into the air. Really enjoy the space, the openness, and then unwind. Bring your left hand around behind you. Stretch your right leg out. Roll your shoulders onto your back. Do a few windshield wipers with your feet just to wiggle things out. I'm going to give you an option to uh, sort of neutralize. So we can do a reverse plank variation, or you can do reverse tabletop. So reverse plank, fingers are going to point towards the hips, palms down. Roll your shoulders onto your back. You can lift your heart. You could just stay here, or you could lift your hips into the air. Reverse tabletop, you would keep your hips down, bend your knees, and then lift your hips. Right. And you can adjust how your hands are, uh, depending on what your wrists will tolerate. So heart is lifted, breath is smooth. We're not dropping the head back. Try to keep your head and neck lined up with the rest of your spine. It might even help to kind of bring your chin in just ever so slightly. And then lift your chest towards your chin. And now bring your hips back down to earth. Ooh. Come back into your staff pose. Maybe your wrists need a little TLC. You could do a few wrist rotations or shake them out a little bit. We've got the legs fully extended, heels on the floor, quads are active, front of the thighs are active, knees are not locked up though. Okay. Hands are going to start to walk down the outside of the legs. As we hinge from the hips, we're keeping that back nice and long. Maybe we're able to take a hold of both feet again, where we use the strap to make our arms a little bit longer. Or even a small towel wrapped around the ball mounds of the toes, not the arches. So if you're holding on to your feet, maybe hold on to the knuckles of your feet. And you can feel the corners of the foot, at least the big toe ball and the pinky toe ball, right? 
and Paschimottanasana. Let's take a deep breath in through the nose. Let it out through the mouth. Again, just down shifting a little bit in this pose. Now we're gonna bring both hands onto the left foot or the strap is just on the left foot. We're gonna lean in out over that left leg. Notice how the right leg just wants to get a little longer when you do that. So kind of keep that right hip drawing back. So the twist is just happening above the pelvis, above the hips. A little mini twist. And notice if your right shoulder is a little higher than your left shoulder or the right rib cage is hiked up, try to level off the rib cage. Navel's lining up with that left leg. We're going to continue to hold on to the left foot with the right hand. Extend the left arm forward as far as you can. And now sweep the left arm up over the left shoulder and then reach back through the left fingertips. Palm is out. Now try to bring your torso vertical. So you'll probably have to lift that left leg off the floor. So the arms are parallel to the floor, just like in a warrior two, right? Except the palms are kind of out and you can hold your foot with a strap or hold on. You can even hold the back of the leg. These are nice options, right? But sit nice and tall. This is where that core connection comes in handy. Right, for our sundial pose variation, you can look forward, you can look back, you can look somewhere in the middle. Good, now sweep that left arm up and forward. Find your left foot or the strap, or you can hold onto the back of the leg with both hands, lots of variations. We still wanna sit nice and tall as we bring the leg up a little bit more. And just accessing that extra stretch. Nice and easy here. Smooth breaths. And now we're going to bend the left knee. We're going to put the left foot on the floor outside the right leg. You're going to kind of wedge the left hand outside that left knee so that the foot stays planted, the right leg stays extended, and the spine stays nice and long. And then take your right arm up into the air and just reach as high as you can, really trying to build space. It might like you're trying to lift the rib cage up away from the pelvis. And now turn your navel to the left. As you turn your navel to the left, yeah, the ribs and the shoulders are going to follow your, you might even try to turn your head, but work on just focusing on your navel turning. And now bend your right elbow, bringing it outside that left knee if it works. If it lands, if it just happens to land on top of the knee, I would go in for a hug instead. Left hand comes onto the floor behind you, so you've got lots of variations to play with. We don't want to crunch down in order to get the arm wedged. We want to make sure we're sitting tall and we kind of let the body decide where the arm goes, right? So uh, kind of listen to your body today. Everything we do in yoga is a practice, right? It's a progression. And, um, you know, they say that on this path, no effort ever goes to waste. So even if it feels like you're taking one step forward and two steps back sometimes, the effort is always rewarded. Good, now we're gonna come out of it with that same length. So lift your right arm up into the air, rotate slowly back to center, bring your right hand down behind you, stretch your left leg out. Again, a few windshield wipers with the feet. Good, and let's do one more reverse plank or tabletop. Fingers point towards the hips. Again, that's to me, uh, you know, the classic version, but you can always have your hands a little further back and out or whatever works for you. And again, the gentler version is to bend the knees and just lift up into that reverse tabletop, keeping your head and neck lined up with your spine. The other version is to keep the legs extended, lift the hips for that reverse plank, lift the heart. So try to lift your chest towards your chin. You can even bring your chin slightly forward, like just even like a inch. Good, now slowly bring your hips down. Once again, sit tall. 
shake your hands, do a few wrist rotations, and give your hands and arms a little thank you. Right. All right, so if you have a block or even a folded blanket or something handy, you might want to grab that. If you don't have any props, you can uh, certainly do what we're going to do next, sans the props. Just make sure that you are situated so your feet are right at the uh, end of the mat and you've got a nice uh, landing strip behind you. And then we're going to lay down onto our backs. So come on down onto your back. And then once you're on your back, bend your knees. Feet on the floor about hip distance apart. You have your arms alongside the body and just take a moment to kind of feel your shoulders root down. You might even kind of rock side to side a little bit. So instead of trying to pinch your shoulders underneath you, broaden the shoulders and then push them down. Sometimes it helps to push the elbows down and then the shoulders and then the palms. Now the feet, again, are about hip distance apart. You don't have to have the heels right up close to the hips. In fact, a little ways out might feel good. And then we're going to make sure that we're not putting any pressure on the neck. So um, your chin is moving away from your chest, but you're not pushing the back of the head into the floor. Remember, the shoulders are holding you. All right. And now from here, just lift your hips into the air. So a classic version of our Satu Bandha Sarvangasana, the bridge pose. Now, a lot of times what happens when we lift the hips into the air is the knees start to splay out. So imagine that you're holding an orange or a tennis ball between your knees. We'll just give it a little gentle squeeze in. The knees don't touch, right? There's something between them and you're just kind of squeezing in. Now, again, all four corners of the feet are on the floor. Your tripod of your feet is rooted down. Shoulders are down. Again, no pressure on the neck. You're also not pushing the head into the floor here. When you're ready, get your prop, your blanket, your block, whatever you're using, and put it underneath your hips. Now you can either go with speed one if you're using a block, or if you have a thick book, you can put that under your hips, or you might be able to turn your block on its long side. I wouldn't go for the tallest version of this, because um, we're going <clears> to <throat> come into a version of supported shoulder stand. So I just gave you a little clue as to what we're doing. Shoulder stand means the shoulders are bearing the weight, not your head, not your neck, uh, no part of the neck's on the floor. If you're feeling any part of the neck on the floor, and you can kind of check it. You don't need to look at the screen. Just do a little check. You can slide one hand underneath your neck and just see. You might want to bring the block down a little bit or come out entirely. Now we're going to slowly pick the feet up off the floor. We want to keep the hips on the block as we bring the legs up over the hips. So we don't want the back to collapse. You're actually pushing the back upward to keep the hips on the block or the blanket or if you're using one of those little spongy spree balls or something too, that always adds an additional element of stability. Now the other option would be to do a legs up variation with the hips on the floor or just maybe on a, a small folded towel or blanket. Anytime we put the legs over the heart, we're getting an infusion of fresh blood flow down into the torso, shoulder stand, even the supported version of this pose, often considered the queen of yoga poses, right? Apparently the head stands the king, but the queen rules, right? So I really love shoulder stand. Just to get the legs over the torso, over the brain, bringing fresh blood flow into our taste buds, our eyes, our brains. But also when we put the legs up like this, we're stimulating the lymphatic system in the legs. We're draining fatigue out of the feet and the legs. Also going upside down can change our perspective, right? So it might give us uh, more of a sense of balance in our nervous system, in our awareness, with our emotions. And we're going to stay here for a few more breaths. So it's not unheard of to do these poses for five or ten minutes. Sometimes a little easier to do when we're propped, right? So that's why I like to do the props and hold a little longer. Once again, feel your shoulders pressing down. Press your heels up. The toes are slightly flexed. Again, you don't have to have your knees locked up. You're just pressing up through the heels. All right, 
let's slowly bend the knees you can let your feet find the floor one at a time let's pause for a moment this is considered a supported version of our bridge pose right so just take a moment to feel the feet back on the earth still noticing the shoulders supporting you and then when you're ready press through the feet to lift your hips just high enough that you can bring your prop out from underneath you and then once the hips land please keep your feet on the floor separate your feet though so they're wider than the hips and then open your arms out either into a T or if you don't have the space for that uh, bend your elbows and do more like a goal post arms and then go ahead and sway the knees side to side and maybe it starts with a small movement so to me the best things to do after a bridge pose after inverting like that is some gentle twisting we just gain some space we increase blood flow into the torso and the hips so let's enjoy it a little bit that's nice and easy windshield wipers we're gonna pause with both knees to the right now you can stay here keeping your right foot on the right edge of the mat and your left foot over there towards the left edge of the mat or you could take your right foot and put it on your left knee if that's a little too intense put your right foot back at the right edge of the mat so the the intent here is not to make that left knee kiss the floor but to extend the left side of the body a little bit more now in this variation of a twist I like to take the gaze to the right so just rolling your right ear towards the floor and so you're looking in the same direction that the knees fell we're trying to allow that left shoulder to remain in contact with the floor and just feel all this yummy space along the left side of the body now our next option would be to extend the left arm up overhead reaching your left hand in the opposite direction of the left knee we still want to feel like the left shoulder is adequately supported And then to come out, if your left arm's extended, bring it back down even with the left shoulder. Bring your gaze back to center. Put your right foot back on the right edge of the mat and then bring both knees up and over to the left. Let's pause here. All right, so you get to decide where we go from here, right? So the left foot can stay on the left edge of the mat or you can put it on your right knee. You can either keep your gaze at center or you can look towards your left arm. You can either leave the right arm where it is or bring the right arm up over the right shoulder, reaching your right fingertips in the opposite direction of that right knee. So this just really opens up the whole right side of the body. Yeah, just letting that sun shine in or out. Right? It's kind of like opening up the blinds, opening up the curtains. Good. then to come out right arm comes back even with the right shoulder gaze comes back to center left foot comes back to the left edge of the mat and then we bring our knees up now from here walk your feet in towards the center of the mat and then splay the knees apart supta baddha konasana if you want you can kind of lift your head just make sure that your feet are right at the midline kind of like that meet at the middle pose for our feet an anjali mudra for the feet and now bring one hand onto your chest and then bring the other hand on top of it close your eyes and just observe the inner energy your inner source the inner source of strength of light of peace the inner source of calmness ease humility resilience your inner source you might feel your breath moving underneath your hands or in your belly or perhaps you just notice your body in this shape feeling 
where the body is in contact with the earth, the floor. And now release your arms back down alongside the body. And just one at a time, extend your legs out onto the mat, keeping the feet nice and wide. Kind of wiggle the feet a little bit, wiggling your hips. Adjust your shoulders if you'd like. <clears throat> Excuse me, you can even take your arms a little wider if you'd like. Turn the palms up towards the ceiling. And once again, let's take a deep breath in through the nose. Out through the mouth. Let's do two more like that. If you haven't already, close your eyes, allowing the mind and the body to downshift completely, to relax in awareness of the support of the floor beneath you, the connection with the earth, allowing this support, this connection to help you to let go, to surrender, to relax in Shavasana.
allow the sound from the singing bowl to gently wake you from this rest, this relaxation. Keep in mind there is no rush or hurry. So first just notice how you feel at the end of this practice. Maybe there's a light or an energy that you have connected with, a source inside yourself. And maybe you just feel neutral. And with the awareness of your body, begin to move your body. And first acquaint yourself with your toes and your fingers, wiggling them gently. Take some time to rotate your wrists and your ankles, adding bigger movements with each breath. You might even choose to deepen your breath, drawing in a deep breath, maybe stretching out through the arms and the legs. And use an exhalation to bring your knees in towards your chest. Roll around a little bit on your back. And when you're ready, you can transition to either your right or left side and then eventually to an upright and seated position. Or maybe you choose to just roll yourself up and come into whatever seated position you find comfortable. And once you're up, let's bring the hands together back to the middle in Anjali Mudra. Lift your heart, bow your head bowing your head to that inner source, inner source of strength, of guidance, of light and peace. May you take your connection with that source with you out into the world. And may you find that strength, that ease, and that peace wherever you go. And please share it with others. Be the sun for others as well as yourself. Thank you so much for sharing this summer solstice slow flow with me today. Namaste.